Hey student, it's Nate, your instructor. I wanted to give you a short video giving you some tips on how to do your weekly assignments. I think this will save you some time. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how to complete the weekly quizzes and also how to do the discussion. So welcome to February, welcome to week two. You guys are chugging along. I saw lots of great discussions posted on the week one module. So thanks for diving right in. And you guys are self-starters. So we're off to the races here. So. All right, here's how I want you to approach your, your weekly assignments. So first thing I want you to do is always look at the study guide. Then from there, I want you to watch my lectures. And then once you've done both, both of those, then you can go tackle the quizzes and the discussion assignments. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna share my screen with you and show you how to do all this. Okay, so let me pull up the main page here. Go back into the Canvas site. It's important that I show you this within the actual course, so this will help you out, so. All right, you guys probably got some of that rain the other night. Wasn't that crazy? We never get thunder and lightning and double rainbow, it was amazing. I'm in the modules view right now, which is the default view. This is the instructor version. The student view looks slightly different. A couple of things I wanna point out here. The printable versions of instructor lectures, you see those right here. If you click on this, you can get the lectures by week within here. So this is a good resource. If you don't have time to watch my videos, you can go in here and scan them that way. But to tackle your weekly work, so for example, let's roll down. Let's assume we're in week three. Right now you guys are on week two. You see here in week two, you have a quiz, you have a discussion. Week three, you have a quiz. You have two quizzes and you have a discussion and a written assignment. So for each week, the first thing you wanna do each week before you even listen to my lectures is look at the study guide. So the study guide is available in a bunch of different places but the easiest way to find it is go to the Start Here module, Welcome to Principles of Marketing, scroll down to Major Projects and Resources, and scroll down to Study Guide. So that's a Google Doc. So you see the Study Guide is listed by week. So you scroll down to whatever week you're on, like example, we're in week two. These are the terms that you need to know for week two with some annotated short definitions. You can do Google searches. You can do other searches to find more expansive definitions of these terms. Have these terms in front of you before you look at the lectures and before you take the quiz. This will help shape your and focus your study strategies. All right, so I see these truncated versions of the terms, but I might need more. So what do I do then, Nate? So then you wanna go back to the textbook, textbook resource site. So again, I'm in the course resources section. Textbook resource site has all kinds of stuff. Mainly, there's a digital version of the textbook, a free digital textbook here. There's the study guide that I just showed you. We have textbook at the re textbooks at the reserve desk in the library. And here's some online resources that you can use. Frankly, between the study guide and my lectures and your online searches using Google, using Wikipedia, using the American Marketing Association site, all those are listed here. You see me wagging my mouse up and down. So that'll help you get all your terms. Everything is in the lecture, but you may not have time to look at all of my lecture. I won't hurt my feelings. I know some of my lectures are long. That's the best way to get the information, but you can do study guide plus your own research and find the terms that way, okay? So you have the study guide in front of you. That's step one. Then you're gonna watch my videos, ideally. And you'll see in the resource page for each week, I'm gonna go down to week three resource page. And you'll see some videos here, like this one has uh, purchase attributes, marketing environmental factors, 
and a YouTube video of things like integrated marketing campaigns. So all of my lectures are posted as YouTube videos, which basically means my, my PowerPoint slides with me talking have been converted into a YouTube video. That means everybody can open these. Now, if you prefer to read and you don't want to follow along and listen to me, then again, go back to the printable versions of the lecture slides, which is one of the modules available on the main module page. All right, let's talk about uh, the quizzes and the discussions. So each week you'll typically have a quiz. You see here in week, you know, we're in week two, again, you have a quiz. These are the topics on the quiz. My view is slightly different than yours. You'll open up the quiz, it'll ask you to get started. You have a full hour and there's usually 10 questions. And you should already have the answers to the quizzes because you've looked at the study guide. The study guide is exactly the, question, the terms that you need to know for the quiz. So these are only 10 points. Your bigger point assignments are gonna be the, the discussions and the written assignments. So let's go back, I'm in the modules view again, and we're going to week three, your next upcoming week. There's that resource page, we open that up. Here's all the lectures that you can view and read. There's even some examples of discussion posts to look at. So we have the study guide, then look at the lectures, look at the resource page and the stuff that's in there. Then you go down and you tackle your assignments. We see a quiz, of two quizzes here. We have a discussion and we have a written assignment. I'm gonna click on this discussion first and give you some tips on how to do discussions. The main cautionary note I want to communicate to you about discussions is type your discussions up on a separate document first, do that outside of Canvas, and then when you have it all done, cut and paste it and drop it into your discussion or your written assignment. And that's because sometimes Canvas doesn't load or it crashes, and you'd be very sad if you do a bunch of work and then it gets swept out on uh, because Canvas crashes. So I like Google Docs, but you could use Word Online or whatever you use, but you should have a system for typing up all your work saving it separately on your computer, whether that's Cloud Drive, like Google Drive, or Word Online, or Dropbox, whatever you use, and then drop it into Canvas each week. That way you've got a copy of all your work in case anything bad happens on Canvas. Here we see week three discussion, and this is our typical format. There's a video, and there's a few questions, and when you type these up, all you want, what you should do is cut and paste the questions and then drop them into a new blank document. So here I am in Google. Perhaps I'm going to uh, use Google Drive. I'm going to create a new, sorry, new, come on mouse. This mouse is a little sensitive. New. <laughs> You know what, I'm gonna do it right off my laptop because this mouse is too sensitive. New Google Doc, open up a blank Google Doc. If you have Gmail, you have Google Drive. And if you have Google Drive, you have access to all the Google application docs, which is their version of Word, Sheets, et cetera, et cetera. And you see I've dropped in the questions here. This is my own behind Canvas, me as a student, typing things up. And then I'm just gonna type up my answer. Answer the question one is da, 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 da. so do me a favor do not retype the questions in your answers just number your answers and then list your responses yes spelling and grammar does count but just short numbered answers are all I need once you have your answers answer to question two, you'll take these you'll copy them We'll go back into that discussion assignment. You're gonna click reply, and you're gonna post them down in here. Make sense? So that's simple. Now I'm gonna give you another option, another way that you can submit your discussion assignments, and that is you can just record a video. So if you're more like me and you like to talk, and frankly, I think we talk a lot faster than we type, 
or maybe you're not the best typist, but you're a very articulate and a good speaker and you're okay with recording things on camera, then you can respond to your discussions, you can answer your discussions with a short video. To do that, when you go into the discussion, again, you're gonna start with back to the discussion, scroll down. Here's the discussion. I, okay, I've researched this, I've watched the video, I'm ready to answer. Once you're ready to answer, you click the reply piece. I click on reply. But now, instead of typing, I'm gonna actually record a video. And you see there's these different icons here. If you scroll over to this one, record slash upload media. Click on that one. Disregard this, this prompt that says, allow ARC to use your, access your webcam. You don't have to do that. Click instead on upload media and select your video files. So record your video however you like to record your video. I frankly just go down into my, uh, my windows and I type in camera and I use my web camera like I'm doing now. I record it, that saves it as an MP4 file on your computer somewhere, usually it's under documents or it could be under camera, but know where your video's files are being recorded. And then when you go to select, you select the video file and you'll grab it from wherever you have it on your computer and upload it right here onto Canvas. Bada boom, bada bing, it's done. So that's another way that you can do your discussions. And you might find that actually a little more fun, a little more discussion oriented than having to type things up. So it's okay to record videos. All right, so quizzes, you look at the study guide before you answer. Discussions, you're gonna type them outside of Canvas and then paste them in, or you're going to record a video. Then you also have assignments. Assignments are a deeper dive. Discussions are kind of short answer responses. And the assignments are like little mini research papers, kind of, you know, essay if you wanna look at it from that standpoint. And here we see in week three you have not only two quizzes at 10 points each and a discussion at 10 points and an assignment at 30 points. So you've got 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 points out of your thousand points uh, in week three. So some weeks are heavier than others. Next week is a bigger week. If I click on the assignment, California cheese. So the assignments are like discussion boards on steroids. There's a little bit more going on here. So you need to write in complete sentences, paragraph forms, separate each answer with a new paragraph. Please don't write in one big wall of words, chunk of text. So each one of your answers, number your answer, and then answer with one or more paragraphs, and then a new space and a new number. So again, I'm gonna take the questions, I'm gonna copy them, I'm gonna move back over to my Google Docs or whatever I use to type stuff up, I'm gonna paste them in, here's my questions, I watch the video, and as I'm watching the video, I'm answering the questions, my answers to these questions. All right, and please don't, type like I am, like your answers shouldn't start with my answer to question one is, just type up your answers. I'm using this just as a placeholder. Okay, and you go on through. And then before you paste your answers into Canvas, delete all the questions out, the assignment questions. I don't need to see the assignment questions again. Now in your assignments, discussions, you paste directly into the reply box, and then you submit it or you record a video. With the assignments, you're gonna type them all up, they're gonna be longer, and when you're done, you're gonna file, download as, this is using Google Docs, or if it's Word, you're gonna do file, save as. You're gonna download as a PDF, portable document format. Please, all of your assignments that you need to submit up as an assignment, they need to be saved as a PDF. PDFs are guaranteed that I can open them. Some of you have, perhaps you're working on a Mac or some kind of different software and inevitably when you go to load it up I may not be able to open it. So I'm allowing you to submit Google Docs, Word, and PDFs. Um, so please save one of those three formats. PDF is preferred, I can always open those. Okay, so that's the assignments. Again, type it up separately outside of Canvas on Google Docs or Word, save to Dropbox, whatever, and then drop it in back into Canvas as a saved file. 
So quizzes, you just answer the questions, they grade automatically. Discussions, you hit reply and you number your answers and, and just reply directly in there, typing the document up separately outside of Canvas First. Assignments, bigger, longer written work, and these do need to be written, whereas discussions can be written or recorded. Okay, does this all make sense? Any questions, please send me an email. I usually respond within 24 hours. I'm gonna close some of this stuff down. Now, we were talking last week about target markets, so you understand what a target market is. It's your ideal customer. You understand that we describe our target market using demographics, specific buckets of measurement, and descriptions of a customer like age, income, gender, ethnicity, education level. Psychographics are softer descriptions, like saying somebody's outdoorsy would be a psychographic, so that's attitudes, interests, opinions, like political affiliation, that's a psychographic descriptor. We use both demographics and psychographics to describe our target market, our ideal customer base. We also talked about segmenting. Segmenting is taking your broad product category. Think of your industry. So maybe if you're Apple, you're in consumer electronics. That's your industry. And there's a lot of different sub-segments, segmentation, within that larger industry. So there's mobile devices and there's computers. Uh, there's a variety of devices within consumer electronics. There's TVs. Those are the different product segments. There's also the different customer segments. Let me give you an example. So I'm still sharing my screen and now I'm showing you, uh, here's Starbucks, I'm on the Starbucks site. And here's some of the ways that Starbucks segments out its customers. You can see on the left column here is segments by geography. Here's the markets that they're in. You can see they go for also ge geographical segmentation, an urban customer. You can see they have an age segment here, 22 to 60. Their gender cuts both male and female. They're going after people in a certain lifestyle stage, meaning typically not people in the middle of raising kids because that uh, is expensive and you don't have as much time to go stand in line at Starbucks. Uh, we see their occupations, how loyal they are, and then some psychographic descriptions. So that's kind of how Starbucks describes some of the different ways they segment their customer base. And then they iterate that out. They define that into different, they have their own internal descriptions, their own segments of different customer bases. And you can see here, uh, they have some different target audiences. High income, high spender, and some descriptions there. And then they also describe another customer segment, another target, as urbanish on the go. And they have another target market of technology early adapt adopters, and at least kind of like your, your millennial hipsters, if you will. We also see healthy ish professionals. You know, they're drinking Starbucks and probably highly caffeinated and possibly highly sugared drink. So they're energized and kind of healthy, but you know, Starbucks isn't necessarily always healthy. Socially conscious is another target audience. Uh, Starbucks is good corporate social responsibility and fair trade coffee and all that. So you can see that the first segmentation piece, again, segmentation is a thought process and a strategy. It's a 10,000 foot view, what segment industry am I in? What are all the different product segments? What are some of the different customer segments that are going after these different types of products? What is my core product category? And then how do I wanna describe my target audience within my specific segment using demographics and psychographics? So we looked at Starbucks with their segmentation language they use here and then how they translate that internally how they describe their different target markets the different customer segments because coffee is a large generic uh customer base right so they could have multiple target markets your product might just have one so we're talking about the segmentation segmentation piece first 
because as you start thinking about your business idea, your product or service idea for your marketing plan, I want you to be thinking broad first. What kind of industry or segment is of interest to me that I already work in or that it's a hobby or something I know? And start thinking about, okay, what are all the different product segments? Like if it was bicycles, bicycle riders, there'd be mountain bikes and road bikes and kids' bikes and beach cruisers and fixed wheel bikes and basic commuter bikes and electric bikes. And those are the product segments. And then we would back up and go, okay, who are the different customer segments that use those? All right, so um, mountain bikes, primarily male, 25 to 54. You know, they like some hard pounding exercise, adventurous. Um, road bikes, that's going to be male and female. We have a lot of them here in North County, Encinitas, et cetera. Uh, uh, you know, more of a hardcore athlete. A road bike person is different than a mountain bike person. And typically higher income, they spend a lot of money on those bikes. Then we get into like kids' bikes. You know, the target is actually the parent that's buying the bike. So remember the product is the net result of the segmentation exercise. It's not the segmentation itself. We're always looking at who's the customer that we're serving with the product. Is this getting you confused? So it's week two right now. By week five, you need to have a product or service idea identified for your marketing plan because we're going to start stair-stepping your marketing plan throughout the semester. So as you're learning these terms and taking quizzes and doing discussions related to uh, your topic of the week, this is all building your knowledge to help you write your marketing plan. Let me give you an awesome resource that can help you with coming up with a product idea for your marketing plan. I'm going back into the modules view. In the modules view, if you roll down to this third module right here, marketing plan training videos, let's click on that module. These modules, by the way, are all before you get to your weekly modules. So you see we have a uh, start here module, uh, recorded Zoom conferences like this one. I'm going to record it and then post it here. The marketing plan training videos, printable versions of instructor lectures, good writing examples. These are all resource modules. And then you get into your weekly modules where you have your week by week stuff and your assignments related to that week. But let's look on marketing plan training videos. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on the marketing plan training videos sublink there. And I want you to look at this second one here. I'm highlighting it right now on your screen. How to come up with a product or service idea for your marketing plan. Click here. So if you click that link and watch that video, oh, here's a video of me within a video of me talking. It's getting weird. Um, that has, it's, I know it's 18 minutes, it's kind of long, but this gives you some excellent tips on how to come up with a product idea. Bottom line to remember is this. You don't have to come up with a crazy new product idea, okay? So most of the new product ideas are already out there. They've already been done. So rather than come up with a new product idea, like maybe I'm like, I have a great idea for a solar-powered laptop. Guess what? It's already been done. You can also have a new laptop idea by how you price the laptop or how you distribute the laptop. Maybe I do a pay-per-use laptop model where you can rent the laptop. And maybe I distribute it at colleges and through kiosks where you can swipe and uh, grab a laptop, use it on campus, and then return it. And then they pay for the time you use the laptop. And so that's a different pricing model, and that's a different distribution model. And hopefully by now, after your week one work, you understand the marketing mix is composed of product, price, place, and promotion. Those are the four marketing mix variables that we use to differentiate ourselves, make our product and or service different from other competitors. And that's how, so it's a combination of the marketing mix plus the target market is the marketing strategy we use to satisfy our customers. All right, so that's a lot I just covered. I'm gonna close some of these extraneous windows. Those are some great tips on how you can tackle your assignments.
Any questions, as always, please don't hesitate to contact me. That's what I'm here for. So I'm going to close down this video at this point. All right. Thanks for listening. Good luck. Email me if you have questions.